Hello, and welcome to Pitch It, Waypoint Podcast discount game show all about the IPs we love. Our guests pitch IPs to us. What would they do with them? Maybe a comic strip, maybe a TV series, maybe a movie, maybe a video game. But this is Pitch It. Our guest today on the on the Pitch It, our guest today on Pitch It uh, happens to be Chris. How you doing, Chris? Hey, so good. How are you doing? How much of that did uh, Discord cut off? All of it? A good Middle chunk, part. yes. A lot I got, of it. I got, I got the <laughs> I H. Started. I got the H, and then <laughs> I started. I just started yelling. <laughs> You went and guess, and then I you hiccup. I was ready to go first. It was a reaction. I was like, oh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Our second guest, we got Al Bob. How you doing, Al Bob? Doing good today. Ready to pitch some stuff. That's the idea. That's the idea. And last but not least, we got Jordan Deeb. How you doing, Jordan? What's up? I'm pretty, doing pretty good, guys. How are you? I'm Fantastic. Right. Today's IP, something special. Marvel. Everyone loves Marvel, right? You can pick here, there, anything you want, anything you want. But so the goal of the show is to impress me with your pitch. It could be a bad pitch, but if you know me, you might sell me on it. So keep that in mind, people. Maybe you can pivot right now. Make something you know that I'm going to like. So I'm going to go around the room and I want everyone to say what their property they're choosing is. And then I'll kind of <laughs> and then I'll kind of round robin it and kind of throw you for a little loop here on who I pick and who's, uh, who's going first. So, Chris. Yeah. What Marvel hero or group did you choose? I have chosen, of course, after, as I told the boys uh, off air, just moments before we started recording, I recently finished Spider-Man Miles Morales. So naturally, for mine, I picked everyone's favorite New York City superhero, Daredevil. Ooh. <laughs> you had me. You I had me. Pivot, <laughs> you got me. I like it, though. I can already see... I'll keep that. I'll keep that to myself. Oh, it's going places. <laughs> Al Bob, what's yours? Going also with a red tight superhero, Deadpool. Ooh, it's a good choice too because he knows me and my favorite. Say, he, my, yeah, that's an Austin pick. Uh huh. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. No shame. <laughs> Jordan, what do you got? So uh, I was gonna have mine just like give you hints about who I was gonna, you know. But I was going to build up to it, but we're doing this first. It's fine. I okay. also picked Daredevil. Hey. Ooh. Ooh. So this is going to be interesting. I really mano y mano. One, I expected to be a some to have someone say a DC joke. I expected that didn't happen. I'm proud of you guys. Two, I fully <laughs> expected you to say Spider Man, Jordan. Yeah, I mean, I could have just used this to pitch my manifested live action Spider Verse. You know, just you guys are stuck here with me at 45 minutes. I will I give you every detail. <laughs> That's honestly what I was expecting because I've heard enough about it already. <laughs> that I was oh. like, he's he's gonna bring his his fucking life action Spider Verse into this. I like, told I, 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 I told my friends yesterday. I was like, if I do not see Andrew and Toby's faces on December seventeenth, twenty twenty one, on December eighteenth, twenty twenty one, there will be a five hour long unedited YouTube video of me just making it with like a whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> like hair's all fucked up. Yeah, I haven't Alfred, slept. Alfred Molina did recently slip that he's going to be in the new Spider-Man. See, you. I'm telling you guys, I haven't stopped manifesting since I found out it was happening. I was like, I'm, I'm keeping it out there, willing it into existence. Yes. Okay. So, do I have any volunteers? Because I'm just curious. And who does anyone want to go first? Does anyone want to give me their pitch right off the top? Bro, I'm raring to go. I'm ready. It sounds like and a volunteer. I feel, and, I, and I feel like I need to get my devil out first. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're doing. Because <laughs> I don't know what you're True. doing either, and I'm scared. <laughs> okay, here's the truth. Here's the truth. I was going to say, okay, Chris wants to go. We're going to go with Albob. But yes, I don't right. want two daredevils back to back, so that's a good point. <laughs> so I'll let you two hash out which, ones, which one of you uh, daredevil guys want to go first. Isn't, Should, isn't your internet bad, Jordan? Shouldn't you go first? Yeah. Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> while we still got Let's me. Let's say you do that while, while we still have him. He's got storms right. and shit going on. So I specifically want to do a Daredevil video game. Damn it. Okay. Okay. All right. And, like, and you're like, what's a Daredevil video game, right? Like, it's in third person. Like, it's just a beat-em-up, right? Which is why it's not. Ooh. It's a VR game. Ooh. Made. Now, I, I, I jumped from different. Um, Ballsy different uh developers you know at one point i was thinking camouflage camouflage made iron man vr and they did a really good job at adapting iron man but 
then I went, well, Daredevil can't see. So there's, the graphics are going to have to be stylized. That's going to be my question. Was it just a black screen? <laughs> no. Okay, so one, that's <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> two, two, I knew that was your question. And I trusted, I trusted Jordan to get there. Guess what? He got there and you still said it. <laughs> Daredevil VR out now. <laughs> So that's the thing. I was like, well, what's a stylized way to kind of see a room but not fully see it? Rocksteady made the Batman games detective mode. So the whole VR game would be in the detective mode kind of style. So Rocksteady would develop it. And I want it to also have a, you know, not copy detective mode 100%. Imagine like that mixed with also like super hot, where things are very stylized, the you know, you could try different ways of going about it because I would, I'd also want it so that let's just, I'm just going to use numbers here for the sake of numbers. Your the five feet radius around you is always visible in this uh, detective mode looking style. But every 20 seconds or so, you get a charge up. You don't have to beat anyone up. It's all just automatic charge 20 to every 20 seconds to press a button on the, one of the move controllers, you get the rest of the room. So you could like plan out your attacks from there, but that only lasts for about 10 or so seconds before going back to the five foot radius. And you know, you have the two move controllers, so that's his two sticks. You could connect them together, make it the whip. Am I feeling a sort of like a uh, Final Fantasy VII remake kind of gameplay-ish kind of style where it's like kind of turn-based and kind of, you know, no. in the moment? I would say it's more that every level... I mean, has anyone here played Iron Man VR? A little bit, yeah. Okay, so Iron Man VR does what I'm doing to an extent, but because you have full range and stuff, there are... It's always waves of drones, essentially. And now there are some waves where they're just coming at you and you have to turn around and do this and that. Because of, you know, the limitations with the graphics we have to have already, I feel like we can't just have like those scenes from the Arkham games where like 20 guys come up at once. It would have to be a few guys at a time. So that's why I imagine it a little bit more like um, super hot because it would be real time. I know super hot technically you could slow down time, but in terms of that, like every segment's kind of its own puzzle and there's different ways to solve that puzzle. And then, so what else I have to give it to give my tagline? What else you want to give me? Okay, so I said studios rocks that genre. I'd say, I guess, first person brawler. What we're doing is we're, we're, we're beating up the hand. And then that's the thing is uh, the, the story itself doesn't have to be groundbreaking at the end of the day. Uh, VR games, I'm not saying can't be good or can't be story based, but Batman Arkham VR, Iron Man VR, and now Daredevil VR were decent stories, but shorter kind of like, you know, maybe adapt a couple of com comics, but not, you know, hit like the biggest points of the character. I would cut out the the segments of like Iron Man VR where you're actually Tony. I don't, you know, like if you want to be Matt, just go play, you know, Phoenix Wright or something. <laughs> so yeah, I, I wouldn't do any scenes like in a in a courthouse or anything or have any interactions with Foggy. I could kind of see it being like between each thing is a cutscene, but it's really just this is where the next guy is, and like you're solving a mystery as you go on. Obviously. Last bad, the big bad, big Chungus himself, fighting Kingpin. Okay. And I feel like that is just going to be one on one, but he's going to have the strength and the size of multiple other guys. So you're really going to just have to like go at it, punching him, trying different tactics. And I would incorporate the ability to like interact with some items in the room. Like if there is, you know, a chandelier or something there, hit it with the whip, let it drop, stuff like that. Okay. Um, hmm. Are there any hallway fights? It's all a hallway fight, basically. Okay. It's right. That's perpetual a hallways. I had to ask that question. Yeah. Um, do you, you want my feedback? Yeah, I'll you take your feedback. feedback. Okay. So, give me your logline one more time. Oh, uh, I don't think I have a, I don't really don't think I have a catchy one. Okay. I, I mean, I could be a dick and be like, see the world through his eyes. That's not bad, actually. Okay. It's not terrible. Um, that that's a that's a box quote. Yeah. That's or not a logline. Or, just, or, for the, just for the record, become the devil of Hell's Kitchen. Okay. Oh, I like that one. That's <laughs> still. That one. That's still. 
I think you should Google what a log line is. I'm going to go Google <laughs> for... log line right now. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me just, let me okay. grab a, a game case real quick. For, for, for this pilot, I'll be a little more lenient <laughs> on this. So don't worry about it. But yeah, you should probably learn what a log line is. Those oh, are so great you're boxes. talking like, like these multiple long ones. Yes, but I want it in one sentence. A log line is basically that summed up. It's going it's it's to summarize the plot a little bit by the sound uh, of it. Yeah, so, you kind know. Of, it depends on what your product is. Logline um, would be. One sentence as to the reason this product is going to sell me and what it is at the same time. Yeah, okay. I definitely don't have that. Follow a and mystery then... and, dis and discover the secrets going underground in Hell's Kitchen. Just like that would be kind of the gist. It's like, don't want to give away too much of the mystery, obviously, because that's half the fun. But it's going to include the hand. It's going to include Kingpin. And like, this isn't based off the show, but like, those are the Daredevil classics. Okay. So I feel like a lot of the selling point of this game is the VR element. Am I wrong? Definitely, yeah. Okay. Um, and then for what the player is doing, you just said he's fighting the, the hand? You said the well, hand, right? You'll, you're fighting the hand, and like I said, I kind of want each level to be a sort of puzzle, where it's not just, okay, mm -hmm. punch these guys as hard as you can. Is who do you have to take down first? You have to keep in mind, you're limited with how much you can see and what you can see. And so you're, it's kind of going to be like the stealth missions in Spider-Man, or like I keep comparing it to Super Hot, just because that's the other VR one, where it's like, you're going to try to go after the guy on the left first, but if you keep losing, just try to go for the guy on the right, and then see how that changes things. Okay. Yeah, I have, there's a sort of John Wick Hex element to it, but in real yeah. time. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I can get behind that. So, and you said Rocksteady, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, I don't actually know if Rocksteady's allowed to make Marvel games, but. Yeah. I think it's a perfect studio. In our universe, it doesn't matter. Perfect. It's true. Exactly. In the, the Waypoint Cinematic Universe. Something like that, yeah, sure. <laughs> the WCU. Sounds taken. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very similar to something Probably. else. Probably. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I think that's I think it's a very solid idea. I think I would for something that relies on a visual. I know for I didn't ask for visuals, but for something since you're doing a VR element, a visual is very very helpful. And I know for this theoretical thing, you can't just get that. But I think what you should have sold home is even more so what it would look like, if that makes sense. Because yes. if if you're in VR, that it's gonna make it or break it within the first minute. Yeah, probably. You would definitely yep. see the the basis of a room you'd see the walls if there's any columns you know light tables whatever would be in a room but you're not seeing any detail like every dining room seat's gonna look the same and it's all just gonna be very like i said kind of the detective mode where you just get the outline kind of in blue you're not okay. getting real depth to it okay like the scene in the in in the in the ben affleck one that was before yeah the ben affleck one where it's raining and he could see electra's face for the first time <laughs> yeah kind of like that too in my mind this is kind of a not the best comparison but it's a pop in my head so i'm just gonna share it it's kind of like in the matrix when neo sees the shapes of everyone with like the numbers around them except for, it's not numbers it's just like basic rough outlines mm -hmm. so yeah i think that's a great idea i think vr is a an outlet that took some balls to bring here and i i I like that. I like that a lot. So I, I think that's a solid first pitch. That's what you get if you hire me. I just walk in and I put my balls on the table. Well, and uh, all right. Happy on. Thanksgiving, Grandma. <laughs> I think we're going to go with Al Bob's next, now that Chris is dead. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason I muted myself at this point. <laughs> all righty. So i am got my notes on my phone, so that's why I'm looking down, just so everybody's aware. Sure. Um, what happens? when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. What happens when the Merc with a mouth wakes up on the wrong side of a bed because of a weird text from Captain America? What happens is Deadpool kills the MCU. And you'll see, it's a six episode miniseries coming to Disney Plus. Oh. It's non-canon, or not canon, it's an alternate timeline, so all this can just make sense. And... Yeah, so a little plot synopsis. Episode one, Deadpool, he wakes up. He, like I said, gets a text from Captain America and has something to do along the lines of like, hey, all the Timmy, just want to let you know, all the chimichangas are gone. But Deadpool, being the insane person he is, misreads it as, hey, I have all the chimichangas. So Deadpool just loses it 
and now he has this vendetta against all the Avengers, all the uh, MCU characters. And he goes over to, he needs some help though, because he knows he can't do this by himself. So he goes over to the X mansion and that's where we get our first cameo of Negasonic Teenage Warhead. But, you know, she opens the door and she's just like, or he asks for help and she just, no, slams the door, shut, done. So he's desperate now. And he goes to the only person that he knows is crazy enough to help him. And that's Cable. Who begrudgingly says yes. <laughs> so episode one ends and it gets, this gets us our first hero that Deadpool kills. And that is Hawkeye. So instead of the crazy action battle that you're going to see in the rest of the series with all the other heroes, it's just a swift killing blow with the katana head clean off just so Hawkeye doesn't even get a line off. It's literally just him. And that just shows how serious Deadpool is. The, the other heroes that I have for the few other episodes, and these can be rearranged into any order. Got uh, Groot and Rocket. Hulk, got Captain Marvel, Spider-Man, and then the finale is Captain America and Iron Man. So in episode four, is he goes up against Spider-Man. The twist here is he finds an, a camaraderie with Spider-Man because this is in reference to all the comics that they have together. So he actually does not kill Spider-Man. So in the finale, Cap and Iron Man uh, send out a distress signal. Spider-Man comes back to help because he's the only one that's near the Avengers facility. And uh, you see Spider-Man in the middle, Deadpool Cable on one side, Iron Man Cap on the other. And then you see a graphic flash, Civil War 2. And then you see Deadpool like, nah, it's, it's his fourth wall break because it's Ryan Reynolds. He pops in front of us. You, you guys aren't getting this. And like pulls down the overhead projector screen. It does a little flippy noise. And then it goes back to Spider-Man choosing to fight with uh, Deadpool and Cable. <laughs> so the f then I have a comedic twist too. the comedic twist is Captain America did not send the text. It was Iron Man playing a prank on Deadpool. <laughs> so it ends or the finale ends with Deadpool completing his mission, beating Captain America. And then the end credit scene opens up and or I should say it ends with him not realizing, oh, there's no chimichangas here. So he's all mopey and sad. But then a end credit scene happens. Portal opens up. And he sees all the and another dimension where the villains of the MCU win. And teases either another season or like a movie special where Deadpool kills the villains of the MCU and you see Thanos, Mysterio, Ultron, uh, Obadiah Stane, and then you just see outlines of all the other villains and all that. Uh, yeah. The logline, or I guess the logline I guess that I had, when all the chimichangas are gone, Deadpool comes for you. Okay, I think that I'm not going to say it didn't sell me. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I think there were, I think I was very impressed by that. Um, I do think with the characters you chose are a little interesting. I think you missed out on having Wolverine in there, personally. That's MCU, though. I, I, I'm aware. I'm just saying, with if you're already going to introduce multi, like a multiverse type of thing, I just I don't know. Right. Maybe Wolverine well, I mean, in the technically they. Uh, it's, hey, it's his show. Technically, it's show. Like Cable and, and Deadpool are now MCU, so now it works. I mean, now, yeah, but it counts. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I'm going through here. Okay. Um. So you had your twist was that it was a prank. I know that. The, that the was Spider -Man the comedic thing. twist. The Spider-Man okay. twist is, or the twist is that he doesn't kill Spider-Man because like, it is killing out all these other heroes. But he finds the com camaraderie with Spider-Man and that's why he doesn't kill him. Okay. 
How do you explain Spider-Man siding with Deadpool and Cable? Yeah, that's something the writers come up with. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, not my job. <laughs> um, that's that. That's the only hole I found in there. Right. Was yeah. That one thing. I love that because it's a it's a twist that if it succeeds, if the if you pull that off, it's gonna mm. be super great. Um, I think it's gonna be very difficult for the even oh, for sure seasoned writers <laughs> to make. It would have to be some kind of. Deadpool. Oh no! Actually, I did. I did. Messing I with did. Actually, brain. I'm sorry. I did. I forgot about this. He says that he has Mary or MJ and Aunt May hostage, and he's going to kill him if he doesn't come with or side with them. Okay. But then at so, the end, they're no. They're never in any danger. It's just Deadpool. <laughs> okay. But he helps them kill Captain America. I mean, Man, he, or... he's just on his side. He doesn't actually do the killing. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I feel like Spider-Man would be fighting on Deadpool's side, but exactly. he would not be letting them kill them. Like, you know how when in the, in the video game where they're falling and they just magically get exactly, wet to a yeah. wall? Kind of, yeah. you know, similar to that. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, but if in, he has my, the two people closest to you. Sure. Hostage, yeah. I mean, sure. Um, in my uh, limited experience in just scripting things and then giving up on them, um, Plot holes, plot holes, plot holes. Those are the things that eat me up inside, and I feel like that mm-hmm. it's a potential plot hole. I'm not saying it is one. Right, I'm saying right. that's, that there's potential there for that to be a plot hole. Everything else I think was fantastic. You're after. You have two. The one note I will give about, like, you, you have options for your after. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what comes after season one? That's both good and bad because it shows that you might not be fully realizing your vision in a script in something else. It gives you openings to do whatever you well, want. Sure. That's what I said. I just wasn't sure if it'd be like a quick, like hour and a half, two hour movie, or if it'd be another series, kind of like season mm-hmm. one, another season, mm-hmm. basically. But, but your after is always the same thing with the villain. Pretty much that you just see a big okay. stack of chimichangas there next to Thanos. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's a fantastic premise. So it's, it's completely in the MCU, right? Yes. But in unlike the comics that is based off of, because I I didn't read the comics, but I just saw that they're more horror based. This would be more action comedy based, like we're used to in the MCU. Still mm-hmm. rated R because Deadpool, and it's animated. Okay, is this? I forgot to leave that out too. It's animated. Okay. How heavy is the comedy? It's it's Deadpool, so I mean, pr- pretty heavy. <laughs> okay, that that's a huge thing. As me being Deadpool is my favorite character, comedy is a huge mm-hmm. aspect of his character. I feel like you would have to be right. Like, oh yeah, yeah. But I didn't want to. My thought about this, that for him. Right. My thought about this is that it's being an alternate timeline, being the animated style, kind of like the what if, kind of indicates that it's an alternate timeline. Mm-hmm. So, I forgot mm-hmm. to mention that earlier, but yeah. Yeah. These are all questions I, I can make assumptions for. Just for the record, mm. I'm, I'm doing my part by making you answer them for me. Exactly, yeah. Just, just, just to throw that out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think that's a solid, that's a solid pitch. Um, I think, did you, did you always know it was going to be a show? This, I know you're, I know you're after, you're kind of back and forth on it. Did you know that this premise for this would always be a show? I kind of had the, I was thought about it, because I was almost thinking of a, like a game at some point, but then I'm like, mm-hmm. I didn't want it to be like a, beat him up kind of like the other one was but i'm like ooh, a show for this would actually work better being episodic getting like a hero every episode kind of thing yeah you said six episodes right yep cool cool can you name the people they the mcu heroes that are in it that yeah. he faces in the first season so, can you name those one more time yeah hawkeye groot okay. and rocket so like they're, they're the team um you get professor hulk yeah captain marvel Spider-Man, and then the finale is Cap and Iron Man. How are they killing Captain Marvel? How are they, how are they doing that? Swords. <laughs> One answer, swords. <laughs> it's Deadpool. He'll find a way. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, in, in the, in the what-if comic Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe, mm-hmm. he started going up against Luke Cage, and Luke Cage is like, how are you going to stab or, uh, you know, shoot me down if I have bulletproof skin? And Deadpool had these grenades that had like smaller nanotech grenades in them and he was breathing them in. So like he could use that against Car- Captain Marvel, blow her up from the inside. He's got some shit. Yeah. I've always 
I think this has happened in the comics several times, but where he teleports into someone and then he dies, dies in the like mixture of doing himself, that, and yeah. then reassembles. And I love when that happens. That's I'm a sucker for that <laughs> in the comics. It always looks super cool on the page, and mm -hmm. it's dope. honestly the, this pitch is like while you were giving that out, I opened up Marvel Unlimited and and added. Mar uh, Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe. <laughs> so good, so it's good. Time to, Very it's good. Time to, it's I need time to read, to read that. again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I found I once found it on uh, Imgur, and I've read it in the middle of an English class. <laughs> <laughs> I used to play Pokemon in the middle of my uh, like three of my classes. Um, Absolutely. Which one? All of them. I played through Crystal. I played through Gold for like the third time. So. Yeah, I used to play I, through I Portal. Like, uh, the the GBC emulator, right? Just yeah. to open up uh, like Pokemon Red, Silver. Oh yeah, that that's why I didn't pass Spanish. <laughs> I dropped out. So. <laughs> well, e. Okay. So, Chris, let's okay. hear your Daredevil pitch. So so to to kind of get it out of the way, after hearing Jordan's pitch, there's. There's a decent amount of crossover here, so just okay. prepare for that. Just get that, get that in your mind. There's Kingpin, the hand. Like there's, there's, there's similar concepts, but as a video game itself. So imagine, if you will, a rainy New York street. De Daredevil's there. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, my video game, literally just called Daredevil. It is a linear third-person action game. So not VR. So you can see. Um, I I struggled with with really settling on a studio that that could take it. I bounced between two and and I couldn't quite make up my mind just because I think both studios would would handle the different facets that I that I want in in this game. So uh, initially my my first pick was Naughty Dog who are the king of linear third person action games. Like I mean it's it, it's you know Last of Us uh, uncharted like like the, they do their their job well. Uh, however, there is a a whole relationship and court thing going on there that I thought Bioware would do extremely well with, but I was worried about the combat because Bioware does mostly RPGs, and this is not this is not an RPG. This is more God of War 2018 fairy, but I mean you could probably pull back most of the RPG stuff. You're not leveling up super super much. I guess you could add a skill tree like in Spider Man. Um, but uh, but Insomniac would probably would probably do it really well, and that's that's kind of the idea. As Rocksteady did for Batman, and as Insomniac did for Spider Man, this is Daredevil in a standalone universe. Uh, so this is he's doing his thing. Uh, other other heroes still appear, much like much like in, in Spider Man. I mean, you might while traversing New York, maybe you'll see the Sanctum Sanctorum or the Avengers Tower. But you're not going to cross paths with, with any other heroes. This is a street-level, Daredevil-focused video game where, much like Insomniac's Spider-Man, he's been established for a little while. He's been running around Daredevil as, for about a year, uh, kind of making a name for himself. He's not super well-known yet. He's not quite the devil of Hell's Kitchen, which is sort of the, the point of it. This is the rise of Daredevil, which I think might be a great name for the video game, the rise of Daredevil, where you take the reins of the man with no fear to become the devil of Hell's Kitchen. Uh, and save him or save it from the grasp of the kingpin. So there's two main facets to this video game. There's there's one your sort of action adventure combaty, very uncharted, exploring, fighting bad guys uh, sort of thing where you're out as Daredevil in in the night. You've got a target or you hear a crime. Basically, you go out you go out and solve it, uh, or you know just beat a dude to death because he was <laughs> trying to mug somebody. <laughs> you know Daredevil stuff. Um, but the uh, the other facet is uh, essentially becoming also Matt Murdock, who of course starting his own law firm. I think is the the right answer. He's a defense attorney, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> I've thought a lot about this clearly. <laughs> uh, where where the idea is though, you have these sort of Bioware like like Mass Effect style conversations with with uh, it's not Happy is his name. What's the, what's his buddy's name? Foggy Nelson. Foggy, thank you. God, I, can't, I can never remember Foggy's name. But uh, so, something that really appealed to me about the Netflix Daredevil Daredevil show was that it wasn't just Daredevil doing actiony things. Is is really the main drama of, of the series was the relationships he had with the people close to him, as as well as trying to defend his clients in court and and try and figure out the the truth of what's going on as Daredevil. And that's the, the the point of the game you could have mass effect style conversations with people like like foggy or while you're while you're in the court and it's almost 
Phoenix righty, right? To where you're presented with the court and it'll come in chapters. So each case is a is a chapter. Um, to where you're presented with a with a problem, whoever client it is that, that you have to defend, and you can Daredevil, being Daredevil, can kind of pick up on things. He's like something something's off, and so you have to have conversations with people, trying to try and figure out where that's at. Occasionally, go into go into court and have to present, and then in between all of the court stuff, you're going out and doing Daredevil things, going to find your person, and while you're while you're out, it becomes a kind of almost Batman Arkham Asylum. Uh, detective mode sort of thing where you're you're finding clues and, and picking up on things and the stuff that you discover while you're out during the third person action segments will come to play play in court and if you miss things while you're out that will affect how strong your case is and there's actually a pass fail to these cases which i think would is, is, is going to be really cool as well as the relationship that you have with your characters depending on the things that you say they might like you or might not and that can also affect your performance within the cases there's a lot more emphasis on the courtroom side than Mr. Beat him up here. Uh, <laughs> I love you, dude. I really want to play your game. Yeah, I hate that you've manifested this thing that I can't have. Um, Instead, I manifested a live action Spider Verse. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm fucking proud of it. So, you know, I said Kingpin earlier. Let's get rid of that. Let's just go. Let's just go with uh, Matt, Matt Murdock trying to make a name for himself both as Daredevil and also as Matt Murdock, uh, attorney at law. As far as far as plot, I didn't think of one very, very much. I have concepts. Um, but again, maybe that's the maybe that's the writer's job. Just drama, you know. Figure it out. I don't care. I told you, ADHD was real hard for me to focus on on particular things. I'd get stuck on one thing and be like, "Yeah, that's really cool." And they're like, "But what do you do in the game?" And I go, "Eh." Uh, <laughs> you press buttons. Yeah, you press buttons. You, but I mean, yeah, beat people up and then you go play Phoenix right. That's really that's that's really what it is. And you, and you're kind of bouncing forth, back and forth between all of those. Okay. Um, how long is the game? Um. Uh, for a linear action game, I le- I typically like them to be around probably 20 hours at most if you decide to take in optional side quests and that sort of thing. But main main story, 12 to 15 hours probably if you if you mainline it. Okay. How many chapters? In my mind, five. A couple hours each. Okay. Mm-hmm. The one thing that worries me is pacing. Sure. Because if you're going to have two completely different uh, forms of gameplay. Pacing is really, really, really important. True. Because if you kind of force the player into something where they don't really want to do at this moment or it doesn't feel fleshed out enough to make them feel like they earned getting to that moment, that's an issue. So um, here, here's, here's what we do. Let's ease up on the chapter numbers. Three. So that way you can you can you get a solid four to five hours per per chapter and each chapter there's multiple times where you're where you're in court and where you're you're going out and beating the shit out of people uh, so does so does that mean um there are three major cases three, and ma- three three major cases with uh in in addition to kind of the the sort of individual cases there's an overarching storyline that i haven't figured out yet but i mean they're connect they're all connected in a way sure sure i like to think may, maybe uh Maybe Kingpin, much like in the Netflix show, Kingpin's starting to to really get a get a grip on the city, starting to to take over. I'm bringing Kingpin back, uh, <laughs> and and uh, but nobody, you haven't seen Kingpin. You don't know who he is. It's like, uh, have you played God of War 2018? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. You know how they talk about Thor a lot, but you never see him in the game. Mm-hmm. That's I want Kingpin to to be. He's he's mentioned a lot, and and. You're starting to feel the adverse effects on 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 him slowly uh, using using the uh, his crime syndicate to to affect his social status and and using that to kind of squeeze the the lifeblood out of out of Hell's Kitchen. But you never actually see him. You're not going to go toe to toe with him in this game. Uh, it's it's all about trying to figure out who the kingpin is and and what he really wants. In addition to solving these smaller individual cases that kind of weave back and forth through what kingpin's doing. Okay, I like everything you're saying. I think, I still think pacing would be difficult. Sure. Because when you gave me a length of 20 hours, which I agree is probably a max for the type of game you're making, I think your angle on having each chapter kind of be a case, uh, it makes me, I want more cases because three cases in, does that mean there's also three dramatic relationship things going on? Are they always a different person? Or is it a, a progressing relationship with one person? Each each case is going to be brought with a different person, but you have the the regulars of Foggy and I forget the the woman's name. Ellen, is it? No, it's not Ellen. 
Is it Ellen? Ellen Page? Aaron? Am I making, am I making yeah, that up? Maybe. Are you talking about Foggy's girl or the girl that's their secretary? The secretary. Redhead. Secretary. Yeah, Karen. Karen. Karen, yes. Karen Page. Karen Page. Yeah, yeah. So you Karen have, you Page. have, close. you have, close. you have, uh, like developing and, and like continuing relationship with, with them and the way that they react to, to you as Matt Murdock and also like the way that they see Daredevil and the way that you kind of play on, off in that. But the cases themselves are going to be different, different people. Most likely, uh, either people, one working for Kingpin that are, that are coming under under heat for some of the shady shit that they're doing and you're trying to, to dig into the what that is or somebody that's affected by what kingpin is doing to to hell's kitchen okay yeah and that taking all that into consideration i think this game is around 12 hours and i and i, and I like that sweet spot that. i like that sweet spot um let's also say you get some optional side quests depending on on how your sure. relationships go sure. with foggy and karen uh <laughs> right uh <laughs> That, that can open up the time a little bit, but mainline, let's say 12 hours. I like that. That's solid. I, th I think that's a, mm. that's a good length. Um, I think your pivot, where it went to you taking um, Kingpin out of it, helped you. Because me personally, I like more grounded stories. I think when you, the more you inject into a story, the more potential it has to just plot holes like I brought up earlier or things that don't come to fruition enough or stuff like that. So if you're trying to knock it out of the park, sometimes just focusing on one or two elements is the way to do that. And I think you doing that on the fly showed that you have a, some understanding of what you want in your product, and that's good. Um, yeah, I think overall that was a good showing. Um, I think that's the type of video game that I would play. Um, yeah, I think that was solid. Good job. And there is a hallway fight. Just one. That was going to be a follow-up question. Just one. Um, <laughs> Just okay. the one. You don't. You don't want to have too many. There's one half one, hour long you know, hallway fight. There's a one thirty minute hallway fight, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just the the season two finale of uh, Cobra Kai. <laughs> oh there's three chapters, and one of them's just all a hallway fight. <laughs> one, just just two hour hallway fight. Um, yeah, but I mean, not having Kingpin in the first game sets you up to actually see him in the second game. Right, and you said the gameplay was basically just hand-to-hand -hand combat yeah yeah uh, and then the the court sessions or whatever but yeah yeah so as, as far as combat goes i mean it's it's kind of atypical with a, with a lot of action games these days but i mean like if it ain't broke don't fix it like the insomniac spider-man or the rock steady batman i think really really works for 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 daredevil i think there's you know you've got the, the nunchucks you got fists you got the whip like there, there's there's plenty that you can do there's a skill tree you could probably if you like like the nunchucks more than the whip per se you know you can, you can go there um, and then, and then, honestly, in my head, like the core stuff, very Phoenix, right? I mean, it's like stuff that you find while while you're out uh, doing like the the Daredevil things. I, I think you can kind of present and, and try and sway the the KC area Mass Effect style uh, conversations with 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 people. I still can't land on on one studio because I think Insomniac or or Naughty Dog would nail the combat, but Bioware is going to kill the conversation aspect of it. You know what I mean? In the relationships, why not both? I mean, I don't. Well, I was just gonna say that I don't see them working no, together. But no. I, but things outsourcing does happen. I probably it yeah, probably wouldn't be. This is my universe. Sure. Bioware gets the court stuff, uh, uh, and uh, yeah. Insomniac gets the action. There you go. Okay, I don't see them working together. But yeah, I was just gonna bring up the <laughs> bring up the fact that outsourcing does happen. I'm not saying it would be Naughty Dog to Bioware or Naughty or Insomniac mm -hmm. to Bioware, but like finding a, a smaller studio that are mm -hmm. good with that type of court ish dialogue I'm stuff sure like that would be whole, like, a good angle studio that that does real like relationship based stuff mm -hmm. that would that would probably do well with the uh like the the court related things who makes like those... uh, phoenix right <laughs> i never played like uh was <laughs> yeah. it i don't know the it's studio Capcom. name yeah, but not... uh like there's that coffee talk game like you know it's oh yeah whatever uh, studio is behind ooh, that one. i like that that's a good idea that's a good okay. one i forgot about coffee talk I'm going to go a little, I'm going to pick a winner. So I'm going to go a little unorthodox on who I picked to win. I like it. Now don't, don't jump to any conclusions. I'm going to name a little bit of it about everyone. Jump and then in. I'm going to, then I'm going to pick my winner. I think Al Bob had the most preparation. I think Al Bob killed it with him going down the list and everything. I think Chris's idea is the most sellable. I'm not trying to say anything about the TV show or the VR game. I just think you look at Spider-Man. You mentioned Naughty Dog. 
if if those two properties came together, can you imagine the amount of money that would have happened? Exactly. Maybe swimming in it like like Scrooge McDuck. But Jordan's is the one that impressed me the most because it was extremely ballsy. Daredevil and VR mm-hmm. has been something people have brought up, so it's not it's not as original as I would have hoped. But I love the idea. Awesome. I'm picking Jordan as my winner. Good job, Jordan. Thank you. Oh, all around. I think everyone did. I, I, I think... legitimately want to play it. <laughs> yes. No, yeah. No, no. Oh, you guys. Those really good. I really want to play it. <laughs> I also think Jordan was the least prepared. <laughs> I don't know. I pivoted but, left and right in the middle of my pitch. Go- p- I just don't really have a story for mine because I'm like, it's a VR game. Story's yeah. going to be the not the very true. <laughs> Although, Blood and Truth. Let me tell you, Blood and Truth. Blood and very truth, good yeah. story. True. The thing about, thing about pitches is, is you want to be able to pivot on the fly like that, but you also want to know what your vision is. And that's mm. a hard, that's a really yeah. hard balance to be like, oh, you want this? That's in. But then if that screws up another thing that you just mentioned, that's bad. That's yep. the thing. So. Yeah, no. I think the Deadpool show, I would watch that in a heartbeat. Oh, I'd pay a shit ton of oh, yeah. money to watch that. Oh, for sure. that. And the Daredevil movie, like I said, I, or, or game, I think that would that would sell money a yeah. lot. The Daredevil money. movie did not sell. No, it did not. <laughs> That's true. So um, one thing, Chris. But, it, now that... but especially, well, I'll, I'll show up, I just yeah. promise. Especially, I'm the host. <laughs> especially yeah, after the Daredevil Netflix show. Like, can you imagine if like a year after that stopped, if they would have pumped out a game? Oh my can God, you imagine that? Right. Yeah. It's yeah. been great. Okay, I will I, I, I will also for the motion capture, the guy who played Daredevil is is gonna beat Daredevil. Like also mm-hmm. Foggy. Oh, Let's yeah. get him in there too. Yep. Hey Karen, you know what? Whole cast of the show, do the mocap for the game. Fuck yeah. You. So one thing I was thinking just for your game, Chris, um, you know, how say like going out for um like get evidence and stuff for the court cases when you're out at it as Daredevil. Mm-hmm. Um do I don't don't want to rip off Batman entirely, but do like kind of like that detective mode and like just you're listening and you're like listening to get gather information that way. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm so that way you don't want to just that. rush in and take them out, but you can, if you, the more I'm you sure. listen. Oh yeah. If you don't just like jump into a fight, you might hear them say some shit. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, I'm into that. I'm into that baby. And then you present that in the court and they're like, where did you get that? And you're like, I don't, I don't know where it came from. <laughs> I found my tie. <laughs> you actually <laughs> put it on for the outro put it on for the put outro it on. <laughs> it's hanging on the handle to my closet i looked <laughs> in my closet, in the closet. <laughs> so that's been waypoint podcast's discount game show pitch it thank you al bob thank you jordan our winner thank you chris it's been great bye eat it bitches hey austin the host of pitch it here Just to share a little insider baseball about this. So the goal of the new show, Pitch It, is for you to be nerdy about things. That's it. Are you nerdy enough to be passionate about it and passionate enough to actually write something about it? Have you ever had an idea for, let's say, Spider-Man? You're like, oh, I wish they would make this game. Ooh, here's a cool plot line. Pitch that to me. Send me a DM. We can get you on the show. The goal is for you to be nerdy and share it with me. Do you have a pitch for an IP? It doesn't have to be Marvel. We just chose Marvel for this episode, for the pilot, to kind of explain how the show works. It's more broad. The goal for the show is to, to, for example, have the IP in question be, to use Marvel as kind of an example here, Daredevil. We had two people on the show that were passionate about Daredevil. So, we only only were one away from having that be a full panel of, like, the goal of the show. Are you passionate about Harry Potter. Are you passionate about Crash Bandicoot? Crash 4 happened, so I'm, I'm complete now. But maybe you have a pitch for a better game. DM me. Send me a DM. We'll hash it out. And I have guidelines for you. So if you think you have a, a banging idea for a Crash Bandicoot movie, let's say, pitch that to me. Say, hey, I have an idea for a Crash Bandicoot movie. That might be good for Pitch It. You want to send me those guidelines? I'll send them over and we'll be in touch. So, thanks for watching.